Hi and welcome. This is part four of the Ultimate Arduino tutorial. The last three tutorials we built a framework to um, use buttons in our Arduino inputs. Now we're going to move on to potentiometers or pots. I have a number of slide pots here. Uh, I don't have a video camera hooked up, but I have these slide pots here. Uh, you can, you know, this could be for any kind of pot. And I do believe a circuit there. So if you go to the, the playlist here, and there it is, the basic potentiometer. Though we're going to go over the code, probably be very similar. Okay, so let's start with the code and let's go into this potentiometer. Anyways, that sorry, that last link was for the circuit. So if you want to, if you don't know or you don't have a pot potentiometer circuit built, that will walk you through it. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and just it's going to be very similar to the code we have here with a few variations for the button. So we're just going to build it into our buttons code. We'll just go ahead and continue to make uh, code built on top of the other one. So we'll call this pots. Okay. And then we're going to have three variables there. Uh, we're going to have, we're going to call it uh, int p. And that'll be our pot. See then now potentiometers will be coming in on the analog inputs. So uh, we're just going to call this A3, OK? Because I think my first pot is coming on analog 3. And then uh, we're going to have an integer PV for the pot value. And we'll just leave it without uh, an initial value. And then we'll have an int PPV. And then that's going to be equal to 0, OK? And that's the potentiometers, the previous potentiometer value. And we'll get into that later on, all right? Now, I don't believe there's anything in setup for us to do because it's just a strict analog input. Okay, and then we're going to go. So this is actually kind of simpler than the, the buttons code in some ways, a lot of ways. Okay, and we're going to just in the loop. Let's start the potentiometer code. Well, it doesn't really matter. We'll start it up here then. Say pots. Okay, and then in the loop, we're going to we're going to do an analog read very simply. So we're going to say PV equals analog read, and then it's gonna we're gonna tell it which pin to read, and we call that just P, right? Yeah, analog read P. Okay, so then that'll give us the value of whatever the value of that potential potentiometer is, and then we're gonna just print it just like we've done before. So serial dot print, and we'll go ahead and put the header in. We'll just do that. Uh, we'll just go P. Uh, sorry, print p uh, p and then zero p zero colon and then the value dot print is going to be pv okay print line sorry so this is just for one pot we'll call it p zero uh, and that's it let's just save that and upload that. And then we'll look at it. All right, so my first potentiometer, moving it up, and you see the values go up. Okay, and once again, we have this, it's not really a problem, but we have this thing where we're getting continuous values, and that's not a big deal. But we could kind of gum up the serial port, and especially if we have numerous controllers, it's kind of better if we just send it out one at a time. Um, uh, so the strategy here, and, and please do let me know if you have a better strategy, but the strategy I use here is now just to detect whether the previous value has changed very much. Okay? And if it hasn't changed at all, if it's more or less the same, then we won't report a value. Okay, So we're going to use that same kind of gate system, except, uh, well, it, we're just not going to use a gate per se, but we're going to use an if statement to prevent it from printing if the thing hasn't changed very much. Okay, so that would be require um, um, using a previous value. Okay, so we're going to read the we're going to read the PV the pot potentiometer's value, and then we're going to put an if statement in it, and we're going to say if the the potentiometer's value is less than the previous potentiometer value, okay, PPV, that's going to be our previous potentiometer value. Okay. Okay, or, and we use that shortcut, that Boolean shortcut, or is greater than PV, 
is greater than the previous potentiometer value. So basically, this is detecting change, right? If it's less than, then it's changed from the last time. It's greater than it's changed from the last time. So if it's changed, basically, period, then we're going to go ahead and print, but only if it's changed. If it hasn't changed, then um, it won't print out. Now, uh, we do need to update now the previous value. So basically, the idea of the the current value, that's the current potentiometer value, and the PPV, the um, previous potentiometer, is that basically you read it, and then you do whatever actions you want on the PV, and then you update the PPV, the previous. So the next time it comes around, PPV is still the previous one for all the stuff until it gets to the end. So if you just put the PPV update at the end, you're gonna, it's going to be the actual previous potentiometer value, PPV. So previous last loop, so basically 30 milliseconds ago, right, the last time it ran the loop, equals PV. Okay, so we just make it equal to PV, but only after, you know, it does all this. So the next time it comes around, it's, it is the previous one, because PV will be updated, and then you can be compared to the previous one. Okay, so I already know what's going to happen, but let's go ahead and run it anyways, just so we can illustrate it all. So it's still coming out, because you see it's analog input, so it's not completely unfluctuating you know there's some change in that resistance a little bit some dirt in there whatever you know just the just a general general fluctuation of resistance there and the potential it was hopping between 45 and 44 so it is continuously still spitting out values it's not just giving me one unless it's changed right and then you know because i have numerous pots on the circuit if i move things it kind of affects other things too so you get a bit of variance in there okay so we can accommodate that variance basically we we do then affect slightly the resolution but you know this this is for example 0 to 1023 1024 resolution 1024 values which is a huge amount greater than you know it's a order of magnitude greater than um than uh the midi values was like 128 right so um it's already good so we can you know we can afford to lose a little resolution uh in our bot uh, but then what the next thing i'm going to show you i guess is what i'm saying is depends on how it affects your resolution, so it depends on how big you want to make it, right? Okay, so the way you can do it is you can put a little buffer in there. So we want our previous value to less than, uh, I'm sorry, our current value to be, if it's changed, right? If it's less than that, but we can say less than two or by two or less than by three, okay? So I think I just do minus one. So if it's the current value, the PV, potentiometer value, is less than the, previous potential value minus one okay so it's got to be so if it's 55 for example uh, it has had to change to 53 uh, right it's got to have been if your current value is 55 if it's less than 53 or more then it updates otherwise it doesn't okay we'll put these in parentheses <laughs> and we'll do see the same on the positive side so plus one Okay, and then we'll adjust that number. So that's what I'm talking about. That one is either going to be bigger or smaller, but it affects your resolution. So we're going to make it two, but that means that every time you move it, you know, it'll it'll only register like whatever four on either side away. You know what I'm saying? Kind of. I don't know. I haven't worked that out exactly, but yeah, you get you get the point, right? It's just you have a little bit less resolution there. Okay. So let's go ahead and update that and see if that is enough to accommodate for the analog jitter there. I'm sure there's other filters and better ways of doing this. Again, I welcome any input on that. So see, it's less, but it's still a bit jittery. It's much less, but it's still a little bit. And and that's actually tolerable in terms of like the main thing, the main reason for doing that. So we don't just have this constant output. So a, an occasional sort of like skitter of some values might be okay. But sometimes when we're actually setting like uh, sound like synths in Super Collider, we're setting like say, you know, so we don't want it constantly getting input. You know, so it's like the volume is fluctuating, then it'll have a little kind of warble to it, even even this little bit. Okay, so why don't we just increase that to two until we get just no, no change. And again, this is a, a lot like our buttons with the gate. It just takes that place of that, that gate business, the BG, the gates, right? Because it only changes if, it only outputs if there's a significant change. Okay, so again, uh, let's 
see if a two makes the difference that we want. And you know, just again, trial and error, we'll just keep doing it. So yeah, it seems to be pretty good there. So I change it, when I stop changing it, it stops outputting. So two seems to be do the trick, you know, and then uh, it kind of fluctuates a little bit when I move some of the other adjacent pots, just because I guess they kind of are on the same circuit in some ways. It might introduce a slight bit of jitter. But that seems pretty good. You get the occasional blip. So you can increase it to three if you want to be kind of foolproof. But I'm pretty happy with that. And we'll see, you know, maybe in a much later time, we'll see how it sounds with if it does make a, a synth go burr, 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 or something like that. Then we'll have to change that. Okay, so but that's the value there. And you can make that a variable in one. I don't think I do in my code uh, just because. But yeah, if you want to make that a variable, it's no problem. Okay. So say that. So I think that's us. Just a quick review. It's pretty simple. We're using a, doing a single pot, and we just got the analog read. The simplest version is just we're getting the values out with a header, okay? Or even the simplest version is just getting the values out, and then we put a header on it. And then uh, we decided that we don't want continuous output, so we put this little trick in here that really says only output when the potentiometer has been changed or the value changes and then we we realized that we had to make a little a little adjustment a little thing on either side because there's some jitter in it so it is kind of constantly changing by one or two at the most but when you add this negative two plus two on either side of it that it's got to change by you know two on either side so it's got to decrease by more than two or increase by more than two for it to output Okay, so then you can kind of control that. It does reduce your resolution a little bit, but like I said, you have a far greater resolution than you do with any kind of MIDI device. And, um, you know, probably as much as you'll, you'll need there. I don't know why I have two semicolons here, so let's get rid of one of those. Okay, all right, so I hope you enjoyed that. We're gonna wrap that up there. The next one we'll take on is basically just wrap everything up. Oh, actually, you know, sorry, take that back. Uh, we were gonna kind of just jam through these, so let's not make that a separate tutorial. Let's just sort of do this quickly because you've already been through it once. Let's just kind of quickly make it. Um, so we'll call this uh, we'll call this a and then we'll say the other one is B. Okay, as B. Okay, so B now will be that we're gonna change it now into the these arrays and stuff, and very kind of quickly do that. Okay, so again we need to define a a, a thing. We're gonna do hashtag, uh, let's see, define, and we're going to say number of pots, and I have, again, seven pots there, all right, and then we're going to make these P, again, the same type of thing, uh, and P, I'm going to put that in each one, okay, and then this is going to be, I'm just going to copy this over because I have these, so this is going to be my um, analog input pins. Oops, why is it like that? Oh, weird. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, right, analog input pins is going to be these ones. So I have ones at A3, A2, A1, A0, A8. I don't, don't ask me why it ended up like that, but that's the that's the order I have them in. And then we're going to have just a blank. Uh, uh, value, but it'll, it'll be an array with a number of pins there. That's when it's useful. And then we'll have seven zeros there. Okay, previous spot value. Might as well take all that. The highlighting is a bit weird, but I think it's because I changed the font size. Okay, oops. Okay, previous spot value. Okay, so now we have our arrays all set up. That's nice. And we'll go ahead and loop through the code here. So basically, we just have to change all these to the array version, but we do have to have a for loop that will run through them all. So let's set up that for loop. We can just copy this one, do this quickly. And uh, we have to change that to instead of number of buttons, the number of pots, right? And then we have to make sure we close out the for loop. Okay. So then that will be, uh oh, did we mess up? No, the pots, okay, right there. That's the for loop, right? Okay, so instead of PV, we're going to have PVI, right? And it's going to be all the we have PVI, analog read PI, that's the pin. If PVI, that's the value, is less than the previous value, I, PVI, PVI. And then we're going to do our fancy little thing that we have down here. We're going to do this kind of concatenated string, right? 
to replace this. And that's going to be, instead of B, it'll be P. And then it'll be string I, and then the colon, and then the value. And then we just have to update that with I, and then the previous value I. So it's actually quite a bit more economical than our previous button code, and uh, just as powerful. And so again, in order to change things, if you do something with 20 pots, you just change that number to 20, and then make sure there's 20 pins in there, and then 20 zeros in there. And I wonder if you even need this previous thing, but I think it does help to have these declared initially. Okay, well actually I'm glad I didn't make this whole second video because we just jammed through that. So there you go, you have the ultimate Arduino code so far. If you just stop right now, you can have a very versatile ones with as many buttons or as few buttons as you want, and then as many pots or as few pots as you want. And actually I'm just gonna add one more last thing and that's just the FSRs, which um, I don't have any hooked up in this particular rig, but um, um, yeah. Well, uh, but I'll show you how to do it anyways. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. I think my dog is, the mailman's coming. And uh, the next time we'll hit uh, FSRs and then we'll be done. And you'll have the ultimate Arduino uh, code that hopefully you don't need to change very much.